So for people who aren't aware of the Petri core, I guess the Flinders Petri found this cored out chunk of granite, I think it is, right? And it has a um, it has these grooves that go around the outer edge of it. And he went there and took a string and wrapped the string around the groove, confirming that it's a it's a um, never ending spiral from one end to the other, right? And because of how close the grooves are together and that it is a perfect spiral, um, his engineering brain figured out that that had to have been a, 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 a drill that was moving at a very high speed that was drilling that core out of the rock at like a super high speed, right? Like 500 well, times. It was, it was a slow speed. It was very productive. Each, ro each revolution was extremely productive. Right. We don't necessarily know the speed, but we know that every time it went around, it was removing an extraordinary amount of granite, mm. more than anything we, I think Chris has said, between 100 and 500 times more productive than anything we have wow. right now. But we, we asked them about this, and they said, yeah, we have hundreds of these in boxes. Of these? Drill cores like this. Yeah. Wow. They were discarded. They were all over the place, and you could just pick them up off the ground. So we did CT scan, uh, sorry, laser scan and photogrammetry on this. So photogrammetry is basically a technique where you make like hundreds of photos from different angles around the object and then you stitch it together by tracking pixels and right. you can basically uh, there is a representation here how you can imagine the images all around so these are the images taken of the object Yeah, it's like how they photograph shit for video games. <clears throat> yeah, e exactly. And the problem with the laser scanner that those grooves are so tiny mm. that it's it's around the limit of the scanner of the resolution of the scanner. So we probably have to go back and and scan it with a with a more accurate laser scanner or a more accurate maybe structured light scanner, because we could reconstruct the grooves, but sometimes the grooves um, are not obvious where to where to yeah, follow the grooves right. because they, they have like cross sections and, and, uh, yeah, it's tough to see it here. There's, you can see the grooves when it gets towards the edge, when the light's shining on it, but like the, 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 the pattern on that rock is like, makes it really hard to see. Yes. So we find, we found a few spiral, uh, like turns, basically on, on on it but to make sure that it's it's 100 percent uh like a spiral and not just a random wrongly connected uh groove we have to go back and analyze it more totally mm -hmm. now i mean the stuff that chris has done analyzing this core i mean he's done a lot of work made a lot of videos he's had uh aerospace people look at them. I think he had an aerospace guy go with him to the museum. They've filmed wrapping the string around it. Um, like, where does that go after people like him do, do something like that? Like, is there somebody like that analyzes that and says like, okay, maybe we need to like rethink how they did this stuff or there, is, should, there should be. The but. museum had no idea <laughs> why this core is so famous. So this is the star object, the museum. But when we were there, they had no idea why. <laughs> mm. It was surprising to so me. So they don't pay attention to any of this stuff? I don't think so. The, if they consider this alternative archaeology, then generally they ignore it. But mm -hmm. um, there's other researchers that are there during, during the day, during the week, that they, they may also ignore just because there's too much on their plate. Right, so, right. The amount of people that are coming in and looking at this stuff, they probably just don't have the time to focus on it are you familiar with chris king no uh his brand is the chris, chris king precision components he's basically manufacturing uh high-end uh, hub sets and headsets for for mountain bikes and other bikes too he was with us uh so he's a manufacturing expert he's doing it for like 50 years like very tight tolerances aerospace tolerances and he was explaining to the museum staff the archaeologist so when we were scanning they were watching us and chris was explaining to them why we are doing it and what's the what are the implications and they were quite open-minded actually so they mm. didn't they didn't refuse to talk about these or 
Yeah, that's what Chris Dunn was explaining to me. He was explaining to me that some of like the younger up and coming archaeologists and Egyptologists in Egypt are way more open to this stuff. And there's there a lot of them even have YouTube channels that explore this stuff and that pay attention to the stuff that like Ben is doing. And, uh, you know, all these like Jimmy Corsetti and all these other guys that are, are making a name for themselves, l l questioning um, the narrative, like these young folks, that, these young people who are coming up, they they're aware of it and they're actually taking it into consideration. And he's optimistic that that, you know, that that dogma is going to change, hmm. which is I think you can see it already. There's like Ahmed Adli is one of the members of the foundation with us and he's got a YouTube channel. It's it's specifically designed to bring this content to the Arab speaking world because mm -hmm. they haven't had it as much as the English speaking world right. and probably French and German, but it's been absent from their lexicon. So you're right there. I think people are open minded um, and it does benefit them because it brings in tourist dollars eventually. So, I would think so. Yeah. Uh, economically, it makes sense. <laughs> so you guys, um, other than that thing you were just showing, that that grid laser thing, didn't you guys also take this to like a defense contractor place where they had some crazy like uh, scanning machines that would analyze it even more thoroughly? Well, that's right. Before we had, um, now we have in-house equipment, but in the past, that's the first few places I went. So I went to defense contractor that had access to old CMM machines and mm -hmm. structured light equipment. And then we went to Zeiss itself in Michigan, which has like CC. Zeiss. Wow. They're, yeah, they're a massive, uh, lens. A, a massive brand that makes, yeah, exactly. Like lenses, lenses and scanning yeah. equipment, camera lenses. So they have CT scanning machines there that are the size of a small room. So obviously mm -hmm. it doesn't lend itself well to on site or on location. Right expeditions or anything in a, in a museum mm -hmm. but if you have the piece so the private collection stuff can be analyzed at a place like that and have you who have like who have you shown these ct scans to that's involved with um conventional egyptology um we've spoken to a few you know we have some relationships uh with 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 researchers and academics in egypt uh, at the Ministry of Antiquities and other places. So we're, I think we've taken the, the softer approach where we, we want, um, you know, we want access to the same, the same sites and the same objects that other academics have access to. And so we've, you know, we, the first few years I was relatively quiet and we didn't really release anything publicly because, um, you know, it's, it's for, to them, it's important. It could be, a, it could be an existential career question if they want to get involved in, in the academic and the alternative academic community. So, um, I don't understand what's alternative about bringing these artifacts into a defense contractor and measuring them. <laughs> it seems pretty standard. That, that work is still above and beyond what's normally applied to this, but the implications could be, uh, you know, could be interpreted in, in a number of different ways. Um, it could be as simple as, well, maybe this culture had something more advanced than they're giving credit to all the way to it was someone completely different or it was aliens or it was high tech computer CNC machines. Right. So there's a lot of different interpretations that have been applied to this subject. And uh, so they're afraid of the interpretations. Some. Yeah. Some are worried that it'll it'll jeopardize their career. They're they're very they intensely criticize one another. Um, over their own papers that aren't even controversial. So if there is something that's controversial that's outside of the mainstream, it could jeopardize their their track. It could jeopardize their standing with their colleagues and everything else that comes alongside that, which is understandable. But I think things are starting to change a little bit. The acceptance level is is higher than it used to be, uh, especially if we're especially if we apply rigorous scientific standards. And if you publish, yeah, in a scientific journal. Right. <laughs>